In this session, we are going to learn how to launch an AWS uh, EC2 instance and how to deploy a PostgreSQL uh, instance on top of that. So what we are going to do is, since uh, PostgreSQL uh, is one of the most uh, world's famous uh, open source relational database and the way it is growing up, it has taken the attention of all the cloud service providers. So if you are already there in uh, PostgreSQL in your on-premises environment, there may be two options. Either you go for the managed service like AWS RDS or if your applications are logged in due to, uh, to, uh, due to some reasons, then in that case, uh, it is good to lift and shift. In that case, uh, whatever uh, databases you have in Postgre in your on-premises environment, you want it to, uh, to uh, let the database run in the same way in the cloud also. So you, you have the possibility of uh, using the left and shift. So what we are going to do is we are going to launch an EC2 instance and on top of that we will deploy the uh, the binaries of PostgreSQL 13 and then we will enable the remote connectivity and then finally we will try to connect it using some GUI tool. So uh, just a basics of like why we wanted to be on uh, on the unmanaged service like uh, infrastructure as a service or EC2 instance so wherein we have to manage all the infrastructure which is related to the uh, management of backups, patching, uh, the patching of the operating system and uh, um, the databases and everything we have to take taken care of. where in the managed service we have everything uh, covered up but because of the n number of reasons the way it works is in RDS uh, the SSH control has been taken away and there is a lot of a lot of uh, restrictions which will uh, which has been imposed and if you wanted to continue with the way you are working in your on-premises environment uh, you just go and use uh, the database in EC2 so whether we are going to use the EC2 instance or the relational database service, it, it entirely depends upon the way the application works and it is it is all the ask of uh, application only. So what we are going to do is we are going to, the, it is a five step process. We are going to launch an EC2 instance using the AWS console and then we will try to log in it through the PuTTY. And then we are going to configure the remote uh, connection from the uh, local system. Then we will enable, uh, then we will try to connect it using the PG admin and the command line interface. So let's quickly start up. So I'm already logged into uh, AWS console. I'll say just launch uh, instances. Okay, let, let me create an instance. So we are going to use the free tier instance. So uh, the best way of learning and practicing the open source relational databases or the NoSQL databases is just go ahead and quickly launch some of the, the free tier in, uh, EC2 instance or from some other uh, cloud service provider, the lightweight virtual machines, and then you can log into that. Or if you have already some local virtual machines, you can use that as well. So I'm going to launch um, RHEL 8 system uh, which is in free tier and that's more than enough one virtual cpu and one gb of ram i'll just say next configure instance details we are going with all uh, uh, default settings we are not going to get anything which is which is uh, non-default so everything will be default only and we'll say next add storage we are going to use 10 gb of the storage which is more than sufficient for our testing purpose and then we will say app tags we are not going to tag uh, anything then we will say configure uh, uh, security settings so this is very very important uh, if you talk about any any uh, relational database or any other database uh, you need to ensure that from where you wanted to access your system and on what port so one of the things we will be doing is we will be accessing the putty session using port number 22 and i'll be using my ip address so or you can mention the ip address of uh, uh, of your uh, your system so it will pick up uh, that as well so uh, let us see my ip and I'll add one more rule. Uh, this is for PostgreSQL. Once we install that, I wanted to allow the port of PostgreSQL as well so that uh, we can access it uh, remotely. Uh, let's go with the, I, I will try with those and we'll see how it works. And then we will say uh, review and launch. 
launch I have already created a key pair I'm going to use that so I do have an access and we'll say launch instances it is not going to take more than uh, one minute or so once it is uh, uh, available then we will see how to connect with that still it is in pending state it is still initializing so once it is done it is still initializing so okay, we have all the details over here we will go to the networking or uh, simply we can say uh, action or connect still it is uh, getting initialized we'll try to access it using the putty session and uh, Okay, this is the public DNS which we have to use. And let's go to the putty session. This is the public DNS and uh, we have to go to authority and we have to give the location of the, uh, the key. So it is ec2 hyphen user those details are already over here so we are logged in now what we are going to do is we have completed the first step first two step wherein we have logged in now one of the thing which we will uh, we should do is uh, uh, we should disable the the firewall so just see I think I have mentioned the commands over here okay SC status so as of now it is enabled only so we are going to disable it so vi config and instead of enforcing we will say disabled i should have used a pseudo And just mention disabled we might have to reboot the instance okay this is done the next step which we have to do is we have to download and configure the PostgreSQL 13 on uh, Linux EC2 instance so what you need to do is uh, you need to go to this site and uh, uh, and uh, there you have to select the Linux and uh, the version if you simply select that it will show you what all steps you have to do so these are the steps which you have to follow I have already copied it on the notepad so we are going to just run it off so we have to use sudo to install uh, the requirements of Postgre it is just five steps we are getting the uh, uh, repository for Postgre and uh, 
there are some default modules uh, which are available so we have to disable those just disable them and uh, then you have to install the postgrade 13 server it's very very fast within five to ten minutes your uh, ec2 instance having postgresql will be be up and running you will be able to access us from your local system either through the command line or through the gui tool whatever you feel is better it will be be ready you need an internet connection to perform all these steps this is done Go to the next step, initialize the database. This is initialization of uh, Postgre 13 server. Then we have to enable it so that after reboot, it should come up. And uh, finally, we have to start the Postgre SQL server. What we will do is, so when you install the Postgre on your system, um, by default it creates a Postgre operating system user. And it creates a database also, which is a Postgre. And uh, there will be a user also, which what's name will be Postgre. So let's switch to Postgre OS user, who is going to be the owner. And uh, this is the command line psql and there is a user also with the name postgre we have to change the password so let's change the password of the user we have changed it now the next step which we are going to do is we are going to verify if we are able to uh, do the remote login on the same server so it, it doesn't make uh, sense when you have to say you have to log in on the same server with the IP address. So what we are going to do is um, so I'm logged in as PSQL. We'll say show config underscore file. So this is your PostgreSQL.com file. So we have to add the IP address of the uh, system where this is running. So this is running on this. So we are going to add this. So we'll say VI. Okay, I'll, I'll show you from here. So by default, Postgre do not allow the remote connection. So anything which is on the local host, it will be allowed. So what we need to do is we need to change this. So we will say VI and uh, listen address we have to change. A lesson address we are going to change and we are going to make it we are going to make it the IP address of the system and the IP address or the host name we'll try with both uh, which one works fine where is the IP Okay, here it is. There is a caveat using it, but just for testing, we are doing this. We have added it, and the next thing which we have to do is we have to add the IP address from where you are going to access this. So there is a file which is called as HPA underscore pg underscore hba.conf which is postgre host based authentication we are going to add that as well and at the bottom of that we are going to say who all are going to access the system so these are the virtual ips of the system from where i'm going to use it so you need to check out on which system you are going to log in so it should include those okay so i have added 
IP addresses. In, in your case, you have to add the IP address of uh, your uh, local system. This is done. So once this is done, you need to restart the Postgre server. I'll exit from uh, Postgre operating system user and then I'll say sudo systemctl restart. I haven't given the permission so that uh, Postgre can restart it. So it is done. Now let's check the status. We'll check the status. I need to reboot the server because uh, C Linux uh, might create some problem. And we will try to log in through the host name from the local system. And I need the host name. So the host name is uh, where's the public host name? This is the public host name. We will mention it over here. So if I simply say p, uh, psql-u postgre and the password which we have just set you will be able to uh, log in. But what if uh, we have to mention the IP address or the host name of the system. It is saying this IP address, uh, it should have been added in, in uh, postgre hba.conf. So let me check if this is the IP address which is added or not. Uh, okay, I think we need to reboot the system as well and then uh, it may work. Okay. Or we will try rebooting the system from here and we will say a reboot instance 194 okay let us reboot the instance it is getting rebooted and within a minute this should come up I should have mentioned the IP address, uh, sorry, the host name. Let us check the status. This is the public host name. We'll say restart the session. EC2 hyphen user. We'll say sudo su space hyphen postgre. And let's log in. PSQL it is not accepting, so that means it is still down. We'll restart it. Pseudo system CTL restart and then we will check the status. I need to use it from this user. So. Okay, this is done. Let's check the status. This is running. Now let's try to connect it remotely. So it will show us this is my PG admin which is running on local system. So I'll say connect 
I'll go to create and he, from here I'll mention the IP address. Let's see, public IP address is this one. The only problem will be if the ports are not opened and it in inbound rules uh, that should be opened or hba.conf uh, should have that entry. Okay, this is saying uh, 122.80. Uh, this is not there in the uh, hba.conf. So we are going to add that entry over here. So in, it should be in this format. So what we will do is sudo su space minus postgre and we will add it the postgrehba.com file. Go to the bottom and add this line. Let's restart the Postgre services. Check the status. Okay, this is working fine. And now try to connect remotely. Okay, we already have the connection. Just say okay. Um, one twenty two. Okay, let me check. If config. Okay. One twenty two eighty two hundred dot twenty three. So let me check. Oh, I I missed one over here. So let's switch to Postgre user and added the file. This should work now. The IP address which I mentioned for host base uh, access authentication, it was wrong. Restart the service. Check the status. And retry the connection. It shouldn't work now. You are connected. So you are connected uh, remotely. Your database is uh, installed on EC2, and this is this is what we have done. So just a recap of what we have done is we have launched an EC2 instance, and we are trying to replicate a scenario wherein we have to to migrate our application or the workload to uh, EC2 cloud. Uh, in in our case, uh, this is just an open source relational database which is uh, uh, which is Postgre, which is uh, still running on the older versions. The newer versions of the RDS support uh, 9.6 onwards till 13, and uh, uh, 14.0 uh, it's in the preview version and uh, this is what we have done um, as a prerequisite we should have then access to the AWS console we should have putty and puttygen uh, downloaded on our system uh, we should have a GUI client in my case it is PG admin then we logged into AWS console we created an EC2 instance with RHEL 8 image and then we connected it to uh, using the putty then we downloaded the PostgreSQL 13 uh, and started it. We enabled the remote connection. And the two important things which were here is PostgreSQL.com file, wherein we ha you have to remove the local host with the IP address of the server. And then we have a PostgreHBA.com file, wherein we have to uh, add the IP address of the 
a destination from where you wanted to connect so those IPs we have mentioned then we have checked the status and one of the thing in PostgreSQL is when we when we install uh, Postgre or download Postgre using yum it creates your uh, a Postgre OS user and by default there is a Postgre database also and Postgre um, uh, database user Postgre database is also there sorry so there are three Postgre and uh, Postgre OS user is the uh, is the owner and this is how we have done it if you wanted to uh, transfer the workload from here it, it is the things will be almost same the way you work on in on-premises environment I hope it is going to help.